test of security. Your husband, you know, your, your husband or wife should feel totally secure in their relationship with you. So that, you know, they go to, they go to Publix to buy groceries. You ain't got to call them every five minutes. <laughs> we got some problems here. What the man going to do? Have an affair in the lettuce department? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, over there, he over there trying to get with somebody in the cornflake row? Come on, man. <laughs> you know, called a man 20 times. He left home 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Why are they so insecure? See, that's what you need to ask yourself. Why is my wife like this? Let me go back and see if I've made her secure in this relationship. Maybe there's some things I need to say more often. Maybe there's some things I need to do more frequently to convince her, I love you, I'm not going anywhere. My eyes are not wandering. Are you listening? Last test for today. The test of work. Well, y'all, y'all all right, man. Y'all know where I'm going with this one. <laughs> the Bible says if he don't work, he don't eat. The Bible says he that does not care for his family is worse than an infidel. Is the joker working? He got to pass that test. Do we have a job? No, we ain't talking about no prospects. We ain't talking about he got some, some, something in the pipeline. Uh-uh. Well, okay, I tell you what. You got something in the pipeline? When something flowing out the pipe, come see me. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we not, we not ready. With you thinking about working. We have a problem today. The problem today is, is that a lot of you ladies have, have succumbed to the world's concept about relationships. And, you know, it's all right for you to take care of the man. You know, you're looking for a Mr. Mom. No, I mean, we laugh, but that's, that's, that's really what's happening. And the reason why you're looking for Mr. Mom is because of your own insecurities. You know, you've decided no man is going to hurt me again. I'm not going to be dependent upon anybody else in my life for anything. I'm going to take care of myself. And so really, basically, you just got the man there for your convenience. You used to have him there in case you wanted to have a child. But no, now you can go to the sperm bank, do that. He's just there for convenience. You make your own money. I am woman. Hear me roar. <laughs> right? You done bought into it. You done bought the whole thing. I got my own money. You know, if I choose to have a man in my life, it's okay if he ain't working. Oh, he's sorry. That's all right. I can take care of myself and my man. Wrong, wrong, wrong. 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 I know what I'm saying is true because I've counseled people like that. You know, it's like, hey. Now, folks think when I, when I say stuff like that that I'm revealing secrets about the counseling session. I ain't called your name. <laughs> and I've been doing this for over 20 years. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the test of work. An individual in love, why well, this? are you ready? An individual in love works for the other person. How do you know this man really loves you when this man is willing to work for you? He wants to work to give you the advantage in life. He wants to go to work so that you can live a better life. That man loves you. He's willing to work two jobs if necessary to take care of 
the woman he loves, the mother of his children. That's a real man. That's a man that's really in love. That's agape. This other stuff is fantasy. Are you listening to me? You know, God's order for things has been so far removed from our culture and our way of life that we really don't know. Historically, biblically, historically, a woman would leave the protection of the covering of her father into the protection and the covering of her husband. Oh, what a wonderful concept. That means you were never vulnerable. Amen. Never. You were never left defenseless. There was always a man to defend you. That's why we have so many problems today. Because there are too many women have bought into a lie in developing relationships and you by yourself. And the guy's not afraid of you. Any man that know, hear me, any man that know he's going to have to deal with a father or a brother or another man if he takes advantage and abuses a woman, homeboy thinking twice. Oh, yeah, he thinking. Now, you know, if I slap her and her, her brother coming, I don't think I'm doing no slap stuff today. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. We all right? Amen. See, some of y'all, you, you're single, and you're going to have these tests to give entering into your next relationship or your first relationship. You're going to be all right. You know, you'll be giving this test out. What, what you doing? So can I see you tomorrow? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Why not? You didn't pass the test. What test? Then you give him a copy of it. <laughs> With his grade. <laughs> oh, is that all right? Let me show you what happens here. We'll be done. Okay, so an individual in love works for the other person for for her mutual, for their mutual benefit. An infatuated person, watch this. Now, some of y'all been in re this relationship. An infatuated person loses his or her ambition. You know, y'all used to sit around and talk about how he gonna start his own business and how you gonna help him in the business. Three months later, he ain't even getting off the couch. <laughs> business, he ain't even got a job. Ain't looking for no job. He wondering why you still here. Don't you supposed to be to work at nine? I'm off today. Oh, okay, okay. Is this vacation or what? You just took a day off? Why is he asking you no question? Because he know how much money need to come in. Uh-huh. <laughs> Told you we should have went to Big Bethel this morning. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know? If they flunk this test, here's what you'll discover. Remember how he used to dress real nice, take a shower, <laughs> put on cologne before he meets you? Now, he just jump in the bed, stanky, funky, whatever. <laughs> don't care. You know why? Because he don't care. It's not love. It's infatuation. It was always infatuation. He's now lost interest. He's not trying to impress you. He's not trying to win you over. You know how he used to go and open the door for you? Now, if you don't get in the car quick enough, you... <laughs> you might need to call 911, man. He be bagging up. You still trying to get in the car. What's going on? Infatuation. The thrill is gone. The newness is gone. 
It ain't, you know, it ain't exciting no more. It never was love. It never was love. It was infatuation to begin with. He didn't change. You just misdiagnosed who he was and what he was doing. The man didn't change. Well, Pastor, he changed. No, he didn't. You just discovered the real him or the real her. You were infatuated, not in love. Those are the first six tests. I'm going to read them real quick. Y'all all right? Yeah. Now, we got six more to go. You think these six or something? Ooh, son. You wait till we get to the next six. Well, but if you, if you take these and apply them to your life, it's going to help you. In whatever stage of a relationship you presently are in, it's going to help you. You know, married people take advantage of one another. You assume a lot of things. Yeah. A lot of things. You take things for granted. Yeah, she know I love her. Look, we got a house. <laughs> Fool, you live in a house too. <laughs> that ain't just for her. You know, you buy your wife a gift. It's a blender. <laughs> it's some knives to cook with. <laughs> for Christmas, she gets the washer and dryer. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Where's her gift? She ain't got nothing yet. There's women in here who hadn't got a decent gift in 20 years of marriage. It's time for that to change. Amen. Now the men looking at me like, oh, Lord, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> here they are. First one, the test of time. Second one, the test of knowledge. The third one, the test of focus. The fourth one, the test of singularity. The fifth one, the test of security. And finally, the test of work. You know, I, I'm, I'm committed to making sure that we get you the right knowledge the right anointing so that you can live a successful life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. We don't have to. We don't have to re keep repeating over and over the same things. We can do it better. Can't we? Amen. Now, it's going to take us a little time. We got to unlearn some things, learn some new things. That's okay. You know, we ain't going to be shouting and rolling around on the carpet and doing cartwheels and all that stuff. That ain't going to help you. I can lay hands on you, throw oil on you, you can look like a grease ball. <laughs> but if you don't get accurate knowledge, you ain't going to change. <laughs> yeah, you know, the image I had in my mind, <laughs> Pastor Walker, you remember this. Remember how R.W. Shambach would come to Atlanta? And, and what he would do, he'd have a big old, look like a tub of oil right here, man. full of oil. And so he'd stand there, and people would come up in line. He'd just scoop his hand down. <laughs> oil fly everywhere. <laughs> so we, we ain't doing none of that. 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 But we're going to give you the resources the knowledge, you know, help you see things better. Bring life into focus a little bit so you can do it successfully. Amen. Amen. You get anything out of the word today? Amen. Glory to God.